I've used generative AI when I prepared these slides and much of the course materials. I've also discussed the use of generative AI for various purposes and various weaknesses that the technology might have throughout these videos. Let's close by looking at the official policy of the business school with regards to using generative AI in your studies. Here is the policy and this is from the fall 2024 and we have updated this policy already once and it might be updated in the future. The general idea is that we allow and we recommend that you use these tools. The reason why we do that is that when ChatGPT first came out about two years ago, 2022, uh, the first reaction was that how do we ban this technology? But it's pretty clear that generative AI is very useful for various tasks. For example, I use generative AI in my work almost on a daily basis for various tasks. It's very useful for generating lecture examples, for example. And people in the business life use this. this. These tools have been, for example, revolutionizing how programming of computers is done. And they have changed how marketing copy is being written. So understanding these techniques is actually, or, or this technology is a work-life skill. This is a technology that you will be using in the future. And if you don't, you are going to fall behind in productivity. For that reason, we think that students should learn how to use these tools responsibly during their studies. Then uh, the second point is that you need to declare when you use generative AI. This is for two reasons. One, we want to know what is students' own work and what is AI-generated text. Number two is that you might come up with a clever use of AI that we don't yet know. And the teachers can also learn from the students. Some of the students are much more advanced in using new technology than some of the teachers are. Then the final point is that the new courses can deviate from this policy. So always check the syllabus. Now let's take a look at these points in more detail. But before we go into detail, I'll show one use case that is not allowed. So you are not allowed to do this. So it's technically possible to just copy paste the course assignment and even give uh, the, the alternative AI some materials from the course and get it to write an essay for you. This is obviously not allowed. And uh, if you're caught doing this, then it will be uh, penalized through the same procedure that we go through when someone is caught plagiarizing text. So this would be a fabrication because you are presenting something as your own that is not your own. Another limitation of generative AI is that it writes these very convincing sounding essays. But in this case, I don't think that the generative AI has actually been trained with the book that I'm using on my course. So what it writes here, uh, it says that according to the book, uh, entrepreneurship uh, contains these uh, four, four dimensions. None of these dimensions are present in the book. So the book doesn't talk about this. So this would be an example of an AI hallucinating an answer. And I've actually seen one student answer that was something that a person who had read the book would not have written. And for a person to just come up with, with something without reading the book, it's very hard for a student because you know that you're doing something that is wrong. So if you just make up stuff, say that you read it from the book when the book says nothing of the sorts, that is, that is mentally really hard for most of us. We think that's, that's wrong and we don't want to do it. But for generative AI, there's no problem with coming up with uh, something that the book might have said, but it didn't. So this is something that you need to be concerned about and you will be caught if you do this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, use of generative AI. More fundamentally, if you think about outsourcing all your schoolwork to uh, generative AI, that makes as much sense as going to a gym and have a machine lift the weights for you. Yes, the weights are being lifted, but it doesn't really help you. And another thing to think about is that if you outsource your studies to AI, why wouldn't your future employer outsource your work to another AI? So we need to uh, learn how to work with these tools and we need to learn the course materials and using these tools to help us think and then help us structure our thinking into coherent essays where the AI is an, uh, like an assistant and the human 
is the creative person who does the thinking. That's the right way of using these tools. Let's get, go into detail on the policy. So this uh, first policy of allowing to uh, use generative AI, we have basically uh, two main points here. It's okay to use this for language checking. So I've discussed how you can improve your writing by using generative AI. And I use this for uh, shortening long sentences and that kind of things because it speeds up my work. I could do that myself, but that's a low value added work. That's just mechanics and AI helps me be more productive. Another uh, way, uh, area where you can use these tools is to generate ideas. And for example, I wrote recently a research article and then I was thinking about broader implications and of, of the theory that we proposed. And we were thinking that it would be very cool to say something uh, broader implications that go beyond the anthropology of literature. So as generative AI, I told that these are my findings and explain what broader implications this might have. And then the generative AI started to throw out ideas like this might um, relate to social psychology in this way, it might relate to a cognitive psychology in this way, and it gave me certain theories that might be related to my findings from fields that I'm not an expert in. And then uh, those ideas then allowed me to read more about those theories and check if they actually explain my findings. And eventually we ended up using one of those theories in the discussion section of the paper. So these are very good at when you are when you're ideating, when you want to come up with uh, categories, like you want to categorize 10 different concepts into two categories or three categories, then uh, these give you suggestions. And you can quickly ask for, for like, give me 10 different ways how I can group these uh, uh, 10, 10 concepts into, let's say, groups of two or three, and then it does it for you. So it's, it's great for generating ideas. As I showed uh, in a previous video about doing literature searches, it's useful for that. So the, uh, the two main uses are improving language, generating ideas. Then we have two important limitations. One important limitation is that generative AI is not a scientific source. So you cannot justify anything by saying that Claude told me so. And I have personal experience on this. I, I had an econometrics book in my uh, bookshelf and I wanted to check one formula from there. And, but I was in a hurry, I just, uh, I had Claude open, I asked Claude the formula and he gave it to me and it looked good. And I used that formula for a calculation and email the result to somebody else. Turns out that that formula in Claude was hallucinated. I did check it in from the book, which I'm supposed to, but I didn't check it uh, uh, thoroughly enough. And I ended up making a mistake because I trusted what generative AI gave me. So always verify everything that these tools say. These are not sources of fact, they are sources of ideas, and they are, they are language policing tools, and they should be treated as such. They, um, Second caveat is uh, relates to cybersecurity and, and data protection. When you use these tools, sometimes the tools store your data and uh, the data they store can be used to train the models or improve the product in some other way. But if you enter, for example, confidential information, then you might actually be breaking the uh, European Union data privacy laws. So don't for example, if you have an interview transcript, be very sure to check if the, where the information is stored. And if you don't know whether the information is only stored in EU area in secure places, then you shouldn't use this to analyze interviews, for example. If you have something that is uh, sensitive data, like uh, health or political view information, these tools should not be used for analyzing that kind of data at all. So be responsible in what kind of data you enter into the system. The second part is, is reporting. Reporting the use of generative AI is a mandatory part of master's thesis. So it has to come in the beginning of the master's thesis and in the grading form, when we grade your thesis, there's a checkbox that we check if you have reported, them in, reported the use of generative AI if you have not, then your study, uh, your thesis will be returned for you and you need to be adding it. So this must be reported. 
And then uh, our guideline, which with some courses differ on how this is done, is to report the generative AI use in the beginning of an assignment. So whenever you do an essay, if you use generative AI, then um, include this table. Uh, what, what tools did you use for which purpose? So you might say that you use uh, Copilot or ChatGPT, Claude or Gemini for idea generation, and then you might say that you use Grammarly for proofreading. And if relevant and if possible, include the prompt that you use. That makes it more transparent for everybody. And then finally, different courses may differ in how these policies are implemented. The course syllabus should always give you the information if there's a deviation from these general guidelines. For example, if there's a language course, then uh, using generative AI to improve your language wouldn't be acceptable because the entire point of the course is to improve your language skills. To conclude, I asked Claude, should I use Claude or some other generative AI tool to do my homework essays in master degree program? And uh, it would be considered as fraud, as the, uh, the Claude says correctly. And then also it is important that you learn the material, develop a critical thinking, particularly now that it is very easy to generate text, generate video, generate audio by computer. There will be lots of AI generated text that is not true out there in the near future. And you need to be able to critically evaluate what these tools provide you, what is true and what is not. But they can be useful for brainstorming and they can be uh, useful for improving your writing. And then Claude co uh, concludes with a good recommendation that if you are in doubt how you should use these tools, always ask the professor or the other teacher who runs the course.